Welcome to episode 38 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-Day Scripture Journals, as well as the new Live It Out Planner pages. I'm also a time management consultant and a certified life purpose coach. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. Have you ever experienced times in your life when you feel like you are putting in the effort yet not seeing the results you want to see? That all of your hard work is not paying off? Or maybe you've got a great idea or a big dream you want to pursue, but you're just not sure if you can do it or wait for it to come to fruition. I've experienced a lot of disappointment over the years as I've been developing my writing and speaking career. I've had a blog for probably 10 years or more now, and it has had different focuses over the years, but it's something I've done consistently. Well, maybe it's more like I've worked on it off and on for these 10 plus years. In my mind, though, I've put in consistent work, but in all honesty, I really haven't done all the work I need to do to make it successful. But isn't that the way with life? We're so conditioned to getting what we want now. We have Amazon Prime where we can get items in just a day or two. We can order our groceries online, then go pick them up without making the effort to find them ourselves in the store. Or we post things on social media and keep checking back every few minutes to see if we've received any likes or comments. Surely I'm not the only one that does this. I've had on my heart for years the desire to help women. That has played out in different ways over the years. Right now, I believe God has firmly planted me in the Planning Woman platform to help women discover their purpose, help them develop good time management skills, and point them to true peace. I've been disappointed because I feel like I've invested a lot of time and a whole lot of money over the last year and a half trying to grow this platform and connect with more women. While I've seen some good growth and results, it's nowhere near what I've envisioned. I've released products and resources that I thought would help women, but they've not been as widely received as I had hoped they'd be. As I said a minute ago, I have assessed my work, and I realized that I have not put all the effort I need to in it to see the results I want. It feels like I have sometimes, but in reality, I haven't. I have been participating in a Bible study over the last few weeks with some ladies at my church. In our lesson just a couple of weeks ago, we read Psalm 1. When we got to verse 3, it was as if a light went on in my head, and I could hear God saying, This is for you. Pay attention. Verse 3 says, He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Now, I'm not one to intentionally take verses out of context, so let me explain how this verse fits into this psalm. Psalm 1 is talking about the life of someone who follows the ways of God, someone who delights in God's law and meditates on it day and night. And because of this single-minded devotion and being in a close relationship with God, this person is prosperous in what he or she does for the Lord. I don't read this as material prosperity, necessarily. It could be, but I think it's more about the success we have in doing things that will bring glory to God. The phrase that caught my attention was, "...yields fruit in its season." I began to think about all the work that I have been doing in relation to the planning woman. And while I still have a lot more I could and should be doing, I know that I do not need to get discouraged because the fruit from this platform has a season where it will ripen. It may be a few months from now or even another year or two, but if I'm tuned in to God and seek his ways and his will, I am confident that this platform will bear fruit. I am looking at the Planning Woman platform as the tree God has given me to tend and grow and flourish. 
and I'm sure God has given you a tree to tend as well. I have been mulling over this verse in Psalms ever since I, it caught my attention, and I've been thinking about what it means to do the work now so that the tree God has given me to tend will bear fruit in its season. Now, I'm not a gardener at all, not at all. In fact, I tend to neglect my plants because I'm not good at remembering to water them. However, I want to walk through some steps that I think we can take to do the work to tend whatever tree God has given us so that we will see it bear fruit in its season. Okay, step one is to prepare the ground. Even though I know little about gardening and caring for plants, I do know you need to prepare the ground before you can plant anything. This is true whether you're planting a garden or potting flowers and plants. The ground needs to be broken up to prepare a place for you to plant. Preparing the ground for the tree God has given me to tend means I've got to stay in a close relationship with him through his word and prayer so I can make sure I'm planting the right tree. John 15 verses 4 and 5 remind us of the importance of abiding in Christ so we can bear fruit. They say, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Abiding in Christ is the key to making sure we tend to the tree God has given us. When we draw strength from Him, then we are able to do the things needed for the fruit to grow. So we have to prepare the ground by spending time in God's Word so that we are in tune with Him and knowing what he wants us to do with this tree he has given us to tend. Step two is to plant the tree. Before our tree can bear fruit, we've got to plant it in the ground we have prepared. If we have prepared the ground well by spending time in prayer and reading the Bible, then we'll know what kind of tree to plant. Before I launched The Planting Woman in August of 2017, I spent a lot of time in prayer and asking God to show me what this new platform would look like. During this time of searching, I realized what I was most passionate about and what I had already spent a lot of time researching and learning about. It was clear that helping women discover their purpose, develop good time management skills, and pointing them to real peace were topics that were best suited for me. Thus, the Planning Woman platform was born. Maybe you're in a season where you're not sure what God is calling you to tend. I would encourage you to continue to seek Him daily through His Word and prayer. Journal your, th your thoughts about your passions and strengths and dreams, goals that you may have. Often God will bring these together so that you can use them to glorify Him. If you're still unsure after a time of searching, I'd love to talk with you and help you go through this process. And I'll share more about that at the end of the episode. So we have prepared the ground and planted the tree. So step three is to water the tree. Once you planted the tree, then you need to water it. Trees need water to grow and sustain life. Now, as I've said, I do not know much about gardening or planting things, especially trees. Maybe I know a little bit about some plants, but I don't know anything about trees. So I turned to the Arbor Day Foundation website to find out how often you should water a tree. Obviously, it needs to be watered well when you first plant it. Then, for the first two years, the new tree is expending a lot of energy developing roots. During the first couple of summers of its life, it will have a hard time coping with the heat and possible drought conditions. So the tree needs to be watered consistently. The Arbor Day Foundation suggests covering the soil with wood chip mulch. This helps the water cling to the soil and provides the deep watering that goes to the roots of the tree. After the first couple of years, the tree's roots are established and it can hold its own in any kind of condition. 
the need for watering all the time is not as great. So what does this look like with the trees God is calling us to tend? For me, it has been consistent work getting out the message of the planning woman, being available to those who contact me, and being diligent in all the little things. Setting up a root system, so to speak, that will allow for a good foundation for that platform. It's doing the little things that help us develop a strong root system for whatever it is we are trying to do. But sometimes the little things are not the most exciting. Am I right? We want to do big and flashy things instead. You know, things that can be seen and admired. In my devotion reading the other day, we focused on Zechariah 4.10. It says, For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. This verse is talking about previous verses where the exiles were weary from trying to rebuild Jerusalem's temple. They had no more enthusiasm for the work, so they just stopped. They saw their work as insignificant because it didn't look like they were making much progress. Maybe your days are filled with small things that leave you feeling like your life is boring or mundane. But it's these small things that God uses to develop a strong root system for the trees he's given us to tend. So the next time you feel like your work is not important, then focus on how it could be developing the root system needed to help you grow and flourish. All right, step four, prune the tree. Once your tree is established and growing, it's important to remember that it needs to be pruned. Pruning the tree gets rid of anything not growing anymore, and it helps to ensure that new growth occurs each year. When I think about pruning the trees God has given us to tend, I think of trimming away any activities that are not beneficial to your tree. For instance, I spend some time every few months evaluating how things are going with the planting woman. I look over the activities I'm doing to see if they're still beneficial to the platform. I usually uncover a few that are just amounts to busy work and are not producing any results for me. So I tend to let those activities go. My time is limited, so I need to make sure I'm spending time on things that will provide the most value. So I encourage you to spend some time at least once a quarter going over your activities. Are they bringing value to what God has called you to tend? Or are they just adding stress to your life? Knowing what's most important and and a priority is key to tending well what God has called us to tend. So step five, we want to enjoy the fruit. After all we, all the hard work that we do to prepare the ground, plant, water, and prune the tree, we should begin to see it bear fruit. Even though my tree of the planting woman is not to the level of fruit bearing that I hope it will be one day, I've seen my share of fruit. God has blessed me with a growing email list where I communicate to women each week. He has also blessed me with women who will email me and share their heart. It makes me feel like I'm on the right track. Waiting on the fruit to ripen in its season reminds me of the verse Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. I think this is an appropriate verse to close with. It may not seem like it now, but I'm certain that if we put in the work tending to the tree God has given us, we will see the fruit of our labor. We will reap blessings we probably can't even imagine today. This is what motivates me to keep going. So what tree or trees is God calling you to tend? It could be your family, your work, or even an area of your spiritual life. If you're not sure what your priorities are during this season of your life, I'd love to work with you to help you figure them out. You can email me at theplanningwoman at gmail.com and I will send you pricing information on my current coaching packages. I want anyone who needs help to have the help, so I've priced 
the coaching packages at what I believe is an affordable rate. So feel free to email me and I'll send you a quote. And there's no obligation to actually do coaching sessions if it's something not in your budget or after we talk and you decide it's something you just don't want to do right now. That is more more than fine. I am not going to hold you to um, committing to a coaching session if it's not something that you want to do or cannot afford at this time. Also, I'd love to see you on social media, so you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash theplanningwoman or on Instagram at instagram.com slash theplanningwoman. I mentioned last week that I started a new Facebook group called The Planning Woman Community. I'd love for you to check it out. So I'll leave a link in the show notes of the episode so that you can click through and request to join. You'll want to join this great group of ladies and learn more about how to live out your purpose and develop good time management skills. So I hope to see you there. Until next time, I hope you have a great week. Thanks so much for stopping by today.